Hello, I'm Barry James, and um, uh, this is uh, a Mortgage Prisoners production, as they say. Um, and I'm with Monica Adams. Welcome, Monica. Hi. Who is one of the Mortgage Prisoners, in fact, one of the uh, early and original Mortgage Prisoners, number 22, if I remember rightly, Monica. Number 22 on the Facebook page when I knew something wasn't right, I started yeah. fishing, yes. But let's go, go back a bit. Tell us a little bit about you and your background. And um, you, you were someone who already kind of, you know, you weren't naive or, 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 or you know, you kind of knew about mortgages, you'd mortgage and remortgage before. Is that right? Yeah, I would call Brian and I, my husband Brian and I, quite financially astute, really. We'd, um, he'd had three properties before I met him. I was on my second property. We then, he, um took over half the mortgage on that and we refurbished that we then bought and sold another one refurbished that and then this was our dream family home when we um remortgaged it because our circumstances changed so we thought we'll remortgage for a temporary deal mm. and that was in 2007 i think you said wasn't yeah 2007 yeah so and 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 um you ended up on law northern rock uh at the last minute yeah it was a last minute change our broker said oh i found this even better deal and um we went for it mortgage uh, northern rock were a high street lender reputable yeah and we trusted our broker and we still do trust him he did nothing wrong so yeah, yeah we thought oh, that's a good deal great yeah well he did nothing wrong you did nothing wrong no. uh it's amazing how uh you could you could end up here really isn't it so so <laughs> Kind of moving through so so what what happened how how, how did it go wrong um so it was a two-year deal um we plan to change it again after two years um and in the meantime the financial crash happened and northern rock crashed itself with it and then we found out we were taken over by nram which was the government side of things mm. and stuck so um so you kind of started off with a perfectly ordinary mortgage northern rock was you know just one of the the high street lenders at the time yeah and and what happened what's been you know uh, I, I understand that you went you ended up having to move um and with a, quite a big impact on your on your life there was a bit of a crash wasn't there yeah, so um, at the time we took the mortgage out, Brian was managing a call centre and the salaries then were, you know, great salary for that um, position. Um, I think, I can't remember the series of events really, but I know we couldn't remortgage um, once he got made redundant, that was it. So he got made redundant. So where we'd been absolutely fine affording this mortgage at that rate, um, life circumstances changed. He got made redundant and we were still, we were then stuck in this NRAM very high rate. Mm. So um, we decided it would be a good idea to just move out temporarily whilst he was redundant. Yeah, it's all coming back to me now. So we moved in with my mum with the two young children which didn't fare well mentally for me at all. Mm. So um, I just sort of crashed, had a bit nervous breakdown, mentally very unwell, depressed. Um, so then we moved to a friend's rented place, which was really horrible with no heating. It was snowing outside and oh, I've never, I remember just feeling so wretched and stupid actually. We thought we'd created this mess. Mm. But you hadn't, had you? <laughs> no, not at all. So, um, so tell funny. us about that. Tell us about, you know. And then, um, thankfully, I went to the doctor, recognised something was not right, and they had these two gorgeous children to look after. So doctor then referred me for some therapy, um, which worked. Luckily, I wasn't too far gone down the line. So six weeks of that therapy, it worked, and I thought, this stuff's amazing. Um, and by then, Brian was... Um, got another job. In the meantime, he'd been temping, getting the bus to work while we were living in this place. It was horrible. And um, 
anyway, then got another job and we could pick back up on our feet and we moved back into the house. We kicked, we had students in it who wrecked the house. So that was quite upsetting, but we moved back in and then started to pick ourselves up. I then thought this stuff really works and retrained it to be a therapist myself. So turned it around like that. So you ended up as a therapist and a, and a life tra- coach. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you've made you've made lemonade out of uh, you were you were handed lemons, but yeah. so so how did you end up in the mortgage prisoners group? So then we just sort of plodded on for years, but my gut knew this wasn't right. I instinctively knew there was something I could smell a rat with this whole situation. Um, so then, two thousand and fifteen, we had the letter saying that TSB had bought our mortgage. Obviously, they were cloaking themselves as something separate called Whistletree. Um, and then I started to really sniff around and I Googled mortgage prisoners, found a little bit from Money Saving Expert, but nothing much. I did email Martin then at that time as well. And I phoned my MP. He said, yeah, write me a letter, mm. which I did. And then um found this mortgage prisoners group on facebook and when i joined i was number 22 on the facebook group so at that point i wasn't very hopeful i have to say yeah mm. yeah yeah and, uh, but overall now now um so, so what happened how did how did this all go go so wrong i know um it wasn't just about uh, the redundancy or whatever was it it was it was actually what's happened in the mortgage world Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, you're resourceful people. We always have been. We got together on our 30s and, you know, um, so we've seen some life circumstances and worked around a lot and worked through a lot of things. But this was just all encompassing because it's where you live and everything else depends on that, doesn't it? You can't keep a roof over your head for your children. Mm. You know, what else can you do? So, so you've been all of this time um uh um kept to this lashed to this you know exorbitant rate yeah yeah so um yeah really ridiculous and at that point it was four times what we could have um reached on the open market if we'd been allowed to do that but of course then the new affordability rules came in so it's just so frustrating we felt so trapped yeah, and a lot of people don't understand this, do they? The the the, the rules still, to this day, um, uh, the operative ones. We're hoping that the new ones are going to start coming through, but mm-hmm. means that you can't afford the affordability. Says you can't move on to a a lower payment. I know it's just Same. absolutely ludicrous, isn't it? It's yeah. And, and course, that's what kept you there all this time, isn't it? Yeah, and then you start to consider your own sanity, don't you? And then all the shame creeps in and you don't want to talk about this stuff. And then you just, it's like running around on a hamster wheel. But thankfully, we loved our home. I mean, my heart absolutely goes out to those people who are trapped in little homes that aren't suitable for families. And thankfully, mm-hmm. we loved it. But at one point, we, had so, we were hosting so many students in the house, you could barely move for them just to pay this mortgage yeah. on top of everything else yeah yeah and t- uh, uh, the mortgage prisoners group has helped yes yeah it's um great to feel that we're not alone but i knew i knew this wasn't right so we watched the program the panorama program in october a couple of years ago and um i, I remember sitting i remember where we sat there and i said to brian i knew it i knew it he said, yeah, we knew it we just knew something was inherently wrong with this. And I know Rachel and and the team are doing great things to bring yeah. this to the surface. And and uh, Martin, you mentioned Martin Lewis um, uh, is becoming a champion for for, for, yeah. for the campaign. Uh, so that's um, a testament to Twitter. People are scared about Twitter. That was Rachel and the others had campaigned to him. We'd done all sorts, and he was helping a, a little bit. But I don't. Obviously, he's got a lot on his plate. Busy man. And then just late at night, one Sunday, I just tweeted him, and he was in the back of a taxi. And then um, and someone else took over, and he then started a dialogue with us, and then really jumped in and really helped. So that was the power of Twitter. Yeah, great. 
but there's, st there's still a long way to go. And uh, as you yes. know, we're going to be campaigning. I know you're going to be in there as uh, as a as a as a part of that. Yeah, uh, and that's going to be great. But um, what would your message be uh, to people out there who are in 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 a similar position? Do you, would you offer them any any thoughts? The hardest thing, and for training as a therapist and then doing all this work for so long, life coaching and everything, it's the biggest challenge, but trying to stay positive in some way, hanging on, keep focusing on that end result and that justice. Even those darkest days where you think, I can't even get out of bed this morning. I, I, I mean, I've had the most awful dark thoughts at some situations just to get out of this, but it really is the self help that I do and working on myself inwards. Cause I, I am trying to change the situation from outwards and yes, it will happen eventually, but on a day to day basis, all I can control is me. So I do do my absolute best to do things to keep me positive and smiling. I think that's great, great advice. And, and of course, as you mentioned earlier on, it's the group. Um, and oh, nice. isn't it good to be among people who understand? They're fantastic. The work they've done, they're just, I'm in awe of Rachel and Jill and Anne and all of them. The things they do, I, I don't know how they do it. They're absolutely fantastic. It'll be a good film one day, I think. That's a, a yeah, that's a very good, it could be whole franchise, I think, yeah. actually. But a <laughs> very good thought. Um, but uh, thank you, uh, uh, Monica, for, for telling your story uh, in this format today i really appreciate it um we'll keep up the fight um and we'll get there uh but thank you for your for your uh willingness to do that and your contribution thank you pleasure thanks <laughs>